name is Rooney and I am a VTuber and an artist that makes free VTuber assets uh, for you to use. Link will be in the description below. But I just wanted to make sure that everybody knew how to actually use them. <laughs> You're gonna have these buttons on the side. None of them have labels, that's okay. The first one is for your model, and then this one and this one are for items in background. So this first big icon is for background, and then this star icon is for items. So if you click on this, you're gonna see a menu, and this is gonna show you all of the items that are available to you. YouTube Studio comes with a bunch of items pre-populated, but if you'd like to add my assets or anyone else's assets, or really any picture onto your VTube model, this is how you do it. If you want to import a asset into VTube Studio, first you're gonna wanna go to your file, explore, and then you're gonna wanna go to your disk drives, go to your program files, Go to Steam, go to Steam Apps, go to Common, and then go to VTube Studio, and then go to uh, VTube Studio Data, and then go to Streaming Assets, and there your assets are. I know it's a super, super long path. Feel free to pause the video and try to copy it. Here in this file, under streaming assets, you can see backgrounds, items, models. So this is how you load anything into VTube Studio, whether it be your model, your items, or your backgrounds. What I would recommend is pinning this folder onto your quick access area, like I did, just so that you don't have to click through all of these different files just to find it again. So once you're here, you're gonna wanna go into the items folder, and this is where all of your um, visual assets are going to be. So if you want to add an asset into, into VTube Studio, all you need to do is click and drag that image into this folder. So if you want an animated version of an asset, you're going to need to have it in its own separate folder. And then if you go into one of these folders, you'll see that it's going to have every frame as a separate PNG image. That's going to allow it to loop within the program itself. Once you've loaded in the images into that specific folder, it should show up on the next launch of YouTube Studio. You probably will have to relaunch after you put the file in if you haven't already, just so that they'll show up. For example, let's look for, let's search for a specific item, um, sprout. So these are assets that I've made. I click the one that I want and I click select. And then you'll see this window here. This is going to tell you which item you're using. And then there's this kind of diagram here and these sliders. So this is supposed to be a representation of your model in the middle. This is the background and then this is the camera. The closer you move it to this end of the slider, it's going to be closer to the camera. The further back you move it, it's going to be closer to the background. So for certain assets, you want to put something in the background behind your model, and for others, you want to put it in the front, on top, or in front of your model. The sprout that I designed can go either way, but I'm going to put it in the back because I like how that looks. In terms of like which number you put it in, it doesn't really matter if you're only putting one asset on but it does get more complicated the more assets you put on. You can see how your model is on layer zero and then it goes negative one and then it goes all the way to negative 30, which essentially means that you can put 30 assets on behind your model and 30 assets on in front of your model. It's unlikely that you're gonna have that many, but it's, it's possible. <laughs> you can also only put one item per layer, which is why they offer so many, I suppose. And in terms of smoothing, smoothing I believe is mostly for how it moves with your model. I really never mess with this setting. So you can put it on any layer you want. Um, I'll show you what it's gonna look like for animated items later on. Um, and then if you want it to move with your Live2D model, then you wanna make sure that this is selected 
You also have options to flip it if you want it to be in a different direction. This also works with things like wings where you have one side of the wing and you want to replace that item and then have it show up on the opposite direction. And then this is if you want to make it blurry, I guess, which is an option. <laughs> Perhaps if it's a spicy asset, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge, but Twitch 2S might. Anyway, we're gonna click OK now. And then as you can see, there's a sprout behind me. Um, you're gonna wanna click on it and drag it out so you can see it. And you wanna use your scroll wheel on your mouse to make it bigger and, or bigger or smaller. Sometimes when you're editing assets, it's gonna edit your model instead because they use the same controls. So I like to move my model way over to the side <laughs> and then in the corner kind of move the asset around. As long as your mouse is on top of the asset you're editing, it will usually default to editing that shape. Now we have it to the size that we want and it's also important where you put your cursor on the object when you're pinning it to your model. For example, if I click on this leaf and then I pin it to my model just in a random place, that's the point in which it attaches to my model. But if I click on the tip and attach it like this, then that is the point on which it attaches to my model. So if I did the same and tried to put the same placement but I clicked up here instead, it wouldn't pin properly. There you go. Oh, also, if you want to remove an asset from your model, you can simply drag it into this um, bottom right corner and a little trash can will appear and then you can just drop it in there and it'll go away. So that's how to do just a non-animated asset. Next, we're gonna go into how to attach animated assets and how that's slightly different. If you want to add an animated image onto your model, Go here and you can see the ones that are animated are the ones that have this number and then an FPS kind of tag attached to them. Okay. Yeah, we can go to animated bat, which is another asset that I've made. Select, um, you can put it anywhere you want. I'm going to put it in front this time. Um, and then make sure that pin live 2D model is on. And then also there's this new section that we can edit that's animation. This is how many frames per second you will be showing your animated item. So the higher this number is, the faster the animation will loop. Typically animations are not that many frames, at least for live 2D model assets. And I can show you what it looks like when something is super fast versus super slow. So typically a very normal animation speed is 30. That's like, or 24, those are also really like kind of fast, typical animation speeds. So let's see what that looks like if it's 30. So as you can see, this bat is moving quite fast. And I can pin it to my model like that and it will still animate as I move around and be pinned as I move around. I'm gonna try attaching it again, animated bat, um, but changing the FPS to something much slower like five. As you can see, the animation is a little choppier for this one. Much, much slower. It doesn't necessarily mean that faster is always better because sometimes you don't want the speed of your animations to be super fast, depending on what the animated item is. So use your own discretion, play around with the numbers. Unfortunately, you cannot change the FPS once you load the asset onto your model. So if you want to change it, you're gonna have to delete it and then add it back in. So yeah, that is all of the info you would likely need in order to add assets to your VTuber in VTube Studio. If you still have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will happily answer all of them. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. If you like this video, don't subscribe to me. Just don't, don't do it. I dare you. I dare you not to do it. And I'll see you next time because I know you'll be back. Okay, bye.